Hey everybody, Justin here. I appreciate you checking out this video. In this video, I wanted to go through a spreadsheet, or rather a methodology that I use to create found poetry. So found poetry is, you know, some people refer to it as blackout poetry or erasure poetry. Um, I like to look at it as sampling, kind of random sampling. But basically you have a source. Now the source can be a single poem. It can be a collection of poems. It could be uh, poems that you wrote yourself, or other person's poems, or a book, or um, a newspaper, a magazine, whatever. It, it can be a, a compilation of sources. It can also be something that's um, not text, but you can convert it into text. It's basically a source, and kind of very general. Generally speaking, it's a source. But most often it's some type of, some type of text. So that's what I'll go with for this purposes of this video. Now, I wanted to show a spreadsheet and a kind of methodology that I used to do this. And again, it kind of generalizes blackout and erasure poetry um, by looking at it in terms of sampling. You know, we're really sampling words from a source, essentially. And I'm going to, for this video, just look at Shakespeare, Shakespeare sonnets. So you can find lots of sources online, um, you know, and you can just copy and paste the text into uh, Excel. I use Excel for this. You can use, you know, potentially something else, but Excel works fine for me, and I've used it since, you know, 1993 or something like that, so I have lots of experience with Excel. And, yeah, I just copy and paste. So, you can also find lots of text, you know, besides web pages and stuff. Well, one specific web page is the Gutenberg site. You can find full text of, you know, collected works. So, you know, say you want Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass, you can go there and get it. Say you want the entire King James Bible, you can go there and copy and paste it. Um, of course, you can just type your own text or copy and paste your own poems, whatever. But when you paste into into Excel, Excel has a option of putting it into one column. So you can paste it and then you can arrange it in one column. And so that's what this column is here, this column, um, well, just happens to be column H because I have other stuff to the left of it. But, you know, this column that I've highlighted is I found a full text of Shakespeare's sonnets and I pasted it into Excel and I, ar I arranged it into a single column. Now, I've done some other things here, too. Um, I've also, well, you can see it's alphabetized. You know, if I scroll down, you can see it's... Uh, you know, in order A through Z. Um, I have also got rid of duplicates um, because, you know, it kind of skews a little bit the, you know, you're going to get a lot of thes and ofs and things like that. So I've just went through and removed the duplicate words. And you can do that quite simply by this column that I have here. Uh, I'm sorry, not that column, by, um, let's see. I don't have it here, but you can do something like this. You can do an if statement and say, if, you know, this word equals the one above it, give me a one, otherwise give me a zero. And, you know, you can fill fill that a formula down. Oh, see, I have the word absent there twice. So I missed one. <laughs> so, so then what I can do is I can just simply take this and, you know, delete that. Um, delete that duplicate okay so you can do do things like that so um, okay so what I wanted to do is also show how I oh another thing you can do in that column is yeah I mean you can get rid of duplicates you can also get rid of in, in data um, in data science or statistics we typically call these stop words words like you know they don't they don't have a lot of predictive power they're very common you're gonna find them in almost every text. So those are words like a, um, of, the, um, is, in, those are going to be in any text, whether it's Shakespeare or Walt Whitman or a, a more modern text. So most of those I, I probably, um, maybe I kept in a single occurrence of those, but those are words that you can safely, you know, pretty much remove from your list. So let me get to the main the main part of how I sample, and that's this this stuff over here. This is just um, 
40 words. Um, 40 words there. That's a pretty good representation of words um, from the text. So, but you can just have you can just have it sample one word at a time or 20 words or, you know, however many you want to sample. I just have space here and I kind of look at those, okay? So, um, oh, also let me just back up a bit. Sorry about that. In this column two, uh, in this column H, you also want to take out, I usually take out punctuation. So you can do a find and replace um, any period, exclamation point, question mark, parentheses, um, the number zero through nine, that type of thing. Um, just do a find for that thing and replace it with a blank, you know. So that's how you can delete it from the column. So how we sample a word, I'll just take this word here. So what it's doing is it's looking in column H. So that's this first part. And then it's generating a random number between one and the count of words in column H. So if there's, you know, a thousand words, it'll create a random number between one and a thousand. So that's what this count A, or this ran between one and count A um, function in Excel is doing. So say it creates the number, the number um, seven or something like that, right? Um, between random between one and the number of elements in column H. And it turns out to be the number seven. So then what it will do is it will it will go here and say, okay, let me count down to seven. And it'll return the word absence. So the word absence would be over here. You see? So that's what all of that's how all of these are generated. So it's just looking through the entire full text of Shakespeare sonnets for a bunch of different random locations in this list and returning the words. And so then for you the creator of the poem or the found found poem then you need to look at these words and see how they can be arranged right um that's that's your job you know so i'm not gonna walk through that now i have a couple of videos where i where i do go create a poem kind of uh live or on the fly um and then also what you can do is you know press f9 and what f9 does in excel is it just refreshes the random numbers so when you do that you're going to get new words there and again you look through maybe take none or maybe take one or two of the words and you know that's usually what I do I go through and take out some interesting words and then try to put them in you know in in lines and stanzas and things like that yeah you can also do a couple things that I have here so I one thing you want to do is say your your poem it really needs a word and you're like well okay that word did not get sampled is it even in the the whole corpus of the text that I copy and pasted um, so what you can do is just type it here and see. So say I want the word um, uh, bird. Okay. Press enter. And bird is in the text because a one appeared there. And so all this is doing right here is it's saying, you know, if bird is in the list, count how many times bird's in the list. So, you know, again, I've made things so they only appear once in the list. So it's going to either return a zero or a one. And so that tells you if a word is in that column. So that's what I do if I'm looking for a specific word. And I, I don't obviously want to keep generating randomly. I just want to see if that word's in there or not. So you can do that. So you can see the word if, nothing, things, right. Those are in the, these are just ones I've typed in in the past. Okay. Uh, but groundless was not, change was not, peak, bounce, and weave were not. Another thing you can do is look for words that contain a substring. So this helps with rhyming a lot. Um, if I have the word speak and I want to see if anything else has E-A-K on the end. This is what um, these ones do. Okay. So what it's going to do is it's going to, first of all, I created this column here. What this column does is it will say, okay, let's look at this word here in H20 and say, does it have the substring E-A-K anywhere in it? If it does, put a 1, otherwise put a 0. So that's the first thing that's going on. So what you're going to do is your this column here will end up being mostly zeros, but some 1s. And they'll be 1s if they contain the substring E-A-K. So I'm going to scroll down to break, okay? 
just so you can see that for break it should put a one there there we go now what the rest of this is these are just three examples three examples or three samples of words from this column that have eak in them there could be more um, but i just have it pick off three and this what this um, function up here is doing it's randomly sampling from that column of of just the ones right so you can see it took off speak break and weakness now if i refresh the random numbers it might it might find different ones if those are the only ones it'll only find those so break weakness weak weakness break weak speaking weakens weakness so there's a couple different ones i'm going to put um den so it should pick up accident accidents and i'm going to see just for fun so deny accidents denied gardens hidden forbidden burden evident etc so that's another thing you can do looking for strings help with rhyming help with um, with other things too so anyways i just wanted to share that technique that i use for found poetry i mean i don't only use this technique for found poetry but it's one of the main ones i use because the sampling really generalizes uh, blackout poetry and erasure poetry so uh, but i appreciate you checking out this video and i'll see you next time Bye bye